Okay, good evening everybody. And welcome to another session of organic chemistry. In today's session, we are going to uh, conclude our discussion of uh, the chemistry of our things. Uh, when we left uh, on Tuesday, uh, we discussed the uh, nomenclature of our things a degree of uh, saturation of our things. And today we are going to devote most of our time to uh, electrophilic addition reactions of our things. But before we do that, let us go ahead and uh, uh, do the uh, problem that you guys did in your, in your quiz, those questions that you did in your quiz. Okay, uh, Ronald, can you go ahead and read this for us? Name the following alkenes. Okay, very good, and thank you. Okay, so here we have to name the following alkenes. Okay, so let us start with this here. Let us call this uh, compound A and compound B. Okay, how do we name compound A? Uh, what would be the apparent name for this or the base name for this? Cyclo. Cyclopentene, very good, cyclopentene. And now where do we start numbering? This will be position number one, right? Okay. And therefore this is two, and this is three, four, and five. Keep in mind that you have to, when you give the numbers, you have to uh, give the carbon-carbon uh, double bond the lowest possible number. Yes, go ahead. Instead of start from here, or we start from here? No, you cannot do that. Okay, uh, the rule is if you have a carbon carbon double bond, the, uh, the, carbon, carb uh, the carbon of the carbon carbon double bond that is attached to a substituent must be given uh, position number one. Okay, in this case, this carbon is attached to methyl, so it must be position number one. Okay, so therefore, let us give the name of this uh, alkene. What would be the name? We have the uh, ethyl in this position, and methyl in five position, and another methyl in one position. So what would be the name? One. Okay, four ethyl, very good. Four. Four ethyl. One five, right? Dimethyl cyclo pentene. Yes, go ahead. We, we, whether to name this one or this uh, one. Okay. To do that, the rule says when you have a carbon carbon double bond, okay, the, the carbon of the carbon carbon double bond that is attached to a substituent must be given position number one. Is that clear? Okay. okay. So the name of this compound is 4 ethyl 1 5 dimethyl cyclopentene. Yes, go ahead. Okay, 
whenever you only have, when you have a cyclic molecule, when you have a ring system, if you only have one double bond in the molecule, you do not need to indicate the position of the double bond because you assume the double bond will be in positions one or, I mean, one and two. Okay? Okay, so let us go to the next one. Compound B. How do we name compound B? What is the base name for this? Cyclo octadiene. Very good. Very good. So therefore, we number, start our number from here. This happens to be a symmetrical molecule, so it does not matter whether we start from here or here. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so now what would be the name of this compound? One, five, very good. So the name would be one, five, one, five, cyclo, cyclo, Oka da in very good. Okay, <coughs> so let us go to the next one. Okay, Kayla, can you read this for us? Write the IUPAC name for the following compounds, including easy stereochemistry. Okay, thank you. I'm um, very good. Okay, so what you have to do here to write the IUPAC name for the following compounds including the easy stereochemistry. So the following compounds are, let us call this A, and let us call this B. Okay, so how do we name compound A? First question I ask for you is, what is the longest carbon chain that contains the carbon-carbon double bonds? How many carbons in there? Seven. Seven, okay. So where do we start to number this chain? From here. Okay, so this is carbon one, carbon two, carbon three, carbon four, <coughs> carbon five, and carbon six, and carbon seven. So we have seven carbon atoms are uh, in the base name for this molecule. Okay, we also know now <coughs> that we have in position number in position number four, we have a methyl group. In position number three, we have another methyl group. Okay. So now we have to name this molecule, including the easy uh, stereochemistry. Now, if you look at the carbon-carbon double bond between one and two, this here, this carbon here, is attached to two hydrogen atoms. Anytime you have a carbon-carbon double bond, any one of those carbon is attached to the same atom or the same group, you cannot have easy stereochemistry. So there is no easy stereochemistry for this double bond here. Okay? So therefore, let us determine the easy stereochemistry for this here, for the double bond between five and six. So to do that, of course, we, we use the uh, can ingol prelog uh, sequence rule, uh, which is to say that we have to assign priority uh, to the groups that are attached to each carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond. So here, if we focus on this carbon here, this becomes A, and this hydrogen becomes B. And then we come to carbon number five, if you focus on carbon number five, this is A, this group here is A, and this hydrogen is B. So what will be the stereochemistry of this double bond? E. What is it? E. e. Because you can see here, the, uh, the, the, the group of, of, of same priority are opposite to each other. On, in other words, they are on opposite side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So therefore, this is E, stereochemistry. So let us name this compound. OK, <coughs> let us name this. OK, we start with the substituent, right? OK, we start with the stereochemistry. 
So we say E E since we only have <coughs> actually it should be five A because we have two double bonds here. Five E. Okay, then what do we have? We have the subsequent, yes. Well, that's kind of, oh, okay, I'm confused because if you don't have to, if you know that there's not going to be any serial chemistry right there, why do you still have to do the five? But bec because you have, anytime you have uh, whatever, the, when anytime you have more than one double bond, you still have to indicate the position of the, of the uh, double bond with the stereo chemistry. Yes. Okay, yes. Oh, yes, you have to identify all the double bonds. Yes. And that is what we have. We have there is a double bond in position one, and there is another one in position five. That's what we have here. Okay, let us look at this here. Uh, what will be the base name for this molecule? How many carbon atoms will be in the longest carbon chain? Seven, okay. You want to start numbering from here, I'm assuming. One, right? Two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay? Now you now have the branches, of course. You have branches in position number three, and you have another branch, which is an ethyl group, in position number four. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is to determine the stereochemistry of this carbon carbon double bond. To do that, <coughs> assign priority. Let us focus on this carbon here. Okay, so this will be priority A, and this will be B. If we focus on this carbon here, this will be priority A, and this will be B. Okay, so what will be the stereochemistry here? That will be what? Z, Z very good, Z. Being, uh, being that you have the group, this uh, group of same priority are on the same side of the carbon-carbon double bond. So this is Z. Now let us give the complete name for this compound. Okay, where do we start? We have one, uh, we have Z. You don't need to indicate the position of the stereochemistry at this point. You only have one double bond in the, in the chain. And then you have the substituent in three and four. So that becomes three, four, dimethyl. Dimethyl, no, I'm sorry, not dimethyl, sorry about that. <laughs> so now we have to follow alphabetical order. So that is, you have the ethyl in the fourth position, so that is four ethyl, three methyl, And then you give the name of the uh, the the base name, and that becomes three eighteen because you have the double bond in the three position of eighteen. Okay. Okay. So let us go to number three. Uh, Jolwina, uh, can you read number three for us? Okay, thank you. Very good. Now, what they want you to do here is to calculate the uh, index of hydrogen deficiency For a molecule that has this molecular formula here, C17, H23, one nitrogen, and three oxygen atoms. Now you also notice here the way this formula is written. 
Whenever you want to write a molecular formula, of course, you write the carbon first, the hydrogen uh, next, and then the other atoms in the molecule should be written in alphabetical order. So that is why you have nitrogen coming before oxygen here. Okay, so let us do that. To do this, of course, I advise that you have the, you know the formula for index of hydrogen deficiency, IHD equals to number of carbon atom in the molecule minus number of hydrogen atoms divided by two minus number of halogen divided by two plus number of nitrogen uh, divided by two plus one. So if we use if we use this formula if we use this formula, okay, we have IHD equals to 17 for the number of carbon atoms minus 11.5 minus 11.5 minus 11.5 for the number of hydrogen divided by 2. Uh, do we have any halogen here? So we don't need to worry about halogen, so forget about that. And then one nitrogen atom, right? So that is plus 0 0.5 plus 1. Okay? If you work this out, you will find out this, the answer to this is 7. Okay? The answer to that is 7. Right. Sometimes, sometimes, you might be asked, they might give you the index of hydrogen deficiency. They might tell you, for example, in this case, that the index of hydrogen deficiency is 7. Or they may not tell you that. They may not tell you the index of hydrogen deficiency in that fashion. They might simply tell you, you have four rings and two double bonds. In that case, you have six index of hydrogen deficiency, okay? And then they will tell you to determine the number of hydrogen in the molecule, okay? They might give you this formula here without giving you this 23. In that case, you have to use this formula here to solve for hydrogen, okay? Okay, anyway, so sometimes you may be given a problem of that nature. Okay, so let us go to the last, last one. Number four. Hey, uh, Amit, can you go ahead and read this for us? Okay, thank you. So what they want you to do here, write the structure for the following IU pack names. So this is this is the reverse of the uh, the <coughs> the uh, the first question we gave you, in which we gave you the structure. You have to give the IU pack name. Here, you have the IUPAC name, you have to give the structure. So let us start with this. The base name is octatetraene. Okay? That means it has how many carbon atoms in the base name? How many? Eight. Eight. Okay, very good. And how many double bonds? Four. Okay, one double bonds in position one, three, five, and seven. Okay, so let us, let us do that here for A. Let us uh, say here we have this double bond, okay, <coughs> and then we have this. Notice here, they only show stereochemistry for, they only show the stereochemistry for the double bond in position 3 and the double bond in position 5, which is to tell you that there is no stereochemistry for the double bonds in position 1 and 7. That is what this is telling you. So there, let us do this. Okay, this is position one, two, three. Do this here. Four. And then in position five, we have another double bond.
Okay, and then of course in position, this is five, six, and seven. <coughs> okay, let us fill in the rest of this molecule. Okay, we have how many here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have our eight carbon atoms here. Okay, if we assume that this is position one, okay, and of course this is position two, assume this is here, this is position two, we say this is position three, four, five, six, seven and eight okay you have two six dimethyl in other words in the two position and six position you have two methyl groups okay so two positions so therefore let us take this out two position you have a methyl group notice what I've done here I simply draw the skeleton first before I begin to put in all of the appropriate uh, uh, substituents. And then in the sixth position, you have a methyl group, this here, so this is a methyl group. Okay, so at this point, that means this must be hydrogen, this must be hydrogen, this must be hydrogen. Okay, and therefore, if this is 7 and 8, this must also be hydrogen. Okay. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, this must also be hydrogen here. 6, 7, 8. Okay, so that is our basic structure here. Now, they want you to give 3E and 5Z. Let us see whether this is uh, correct. 3E right here. Let's determine the uh, the absolute the uh, easy stereochemistry for this carbon-carbon double bond. To do that, okay, we focus on this carbon here. Okay, this group right here would be A, and this hydrogen is B. Now let us focus on this carbon here. This group here would be A, and this hydrogen is B. Okay, therefore, what is the stereochemistry of this double bond? E. What is it? E. e. And that is what we have here. So that is correct. So that is E. Okay, now we come to the double bond between 5 and 6. Okay. Let us assign priority once again. If we focus on this carbon here, this is priority A, and this is priority B. Take this out of here. If we also focus on this carbon, this would be priority A. And this hydrogen is priority B. So therefore, what is the stereochemistry of this carbon-carbon double bond? What is it? Z. Z. And that is what we have there. Now, if you write your skeleton, skeletal structure, the basic structure, and this is not Z, and you want Z, then all you need to do is just change the groups right here. Okay? Okay, so this is the correct structure for this. Yes. Huh? Say that again. Well, as long as you indicate there is easy stereochemistry, that's fine. Okay? Okay. Let us do a B. Let's do B. Okay, now is, this is cis 3 3 dimethyl 4 propyl 1 5 octadiene. Now, what is the base name here? Okay, octadiene, eight carbon atoms. Okay, 
So here we have double bonds in position one and five. Double bonds in position one and five. And they also say cis. Uh, three three dimethyl. Okay, this is the fact of the matter, if you take a look at this, since they say cis uh, the cis isomer is what they want, what that is also telling us you only have one stereochemistry in this molecule. So let us start with that. Okay, just a minute. Let us start with the double bond first, right? <coughs> I'll say we have this. Okay, you ask why does it have only one alterochemistry in the double bond? The, the fact of the matter is they've simply just giving us cis. If you have more than one stereochemistry, this would be either cis cis or trans trans or cis trans. In other words, they are simply telling us only one of the double bonds has a stereochemistry. Okay. Okay, so now let us work with this. <coughs> we have uh, four propyl, let us see here. It does, let us assume that this is five position, okay, no, no, let us say this is uh, CH2 right here, no. Sorry, I need this space here. Have you all got this here? Okay, I'm going to erase that so I have more space up here. Okay, so I'll start with carbon one. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. <coughs> Okay, now they say in uh, one and five, they have double bonds. Okay, so we have double bonds here. Assuming this is position one, and one, two, three, four, five. So we have this here. Oh, no, no, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. Okay, so we now have the carbon-carbon uh, double bond in the appropriate position, one and five. And then they say in position number three, which is he this here, you have a metal, and then you have another metal. Okay, and then in position number four, in position number four, you have a, a propyl right here. Okay, what that tells us, now we see our hydrogen here. Okay, and here we have hydrogen here. So what this is telling us, we have hydrogen here because we have assigned all of the substituents. And here we also have hydrogen here. And hydrogen here. And here this is a CH2. This must be a CH3, okay? Okay, let us number here. That is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, okay? <coughs> now, they say cis. What they now tell us to do is cis. What do we have here? Uh, cis. For this to be cis, of course, we know here we cannot have stereochemistry here. So the stereochemistry that we need must be here. Okay? Will this, the structure that I've drawn here, will this be cis or trans? Yeah. Trans. Okay? Therefore, you have to switch it. Okay? So what I need to do now is simply just do this. To get the trans, I simply will take this out.
Okay? Oh, wait a minute. They want the seeds, right? Oh, we want this. I'm sorry about that. We do want the. Hmm. I don't know with my writing here. Okay, we want the seeds, so that means this here. Hydrogen will be here, and this will be here. Okay? So that would be the, the compound they want us to write. This is the cis isomer right here. Okay? The double bond here is cis. Now, if they had told us to do the uh, easy stereochemistry, this would be Z right here. <coughs> okay? So let us go. To, as in now we've done uh, B. That is B. Okay, everybody got that? Okay, now let us do C right here. I think I may have enough space here. C is one six dimethyl cyclohexene. One six dimethyl cyclohexene. So this should be very simple. The base name is cyclohexene. That is cyclohexene. And now you say one six dimethyl. Okay, so if this is one position, you have a methyl group in one position, where do you think the other methyl will be? Here or here? Right here, very good. Because that the numbering will be one, two, three, four. Five and six. Okay, and that is the answer to this question. Yes, yeah, C. Okay, so at this point we have finished all the questions in your quiz. So now let us go to uh, today's uh, presentation. Okay, what I want to do here, I want to start by introducing you to what we call organic reaction mechanism. Let us call it introduction to organic reaction. Organic reaction mechanism. In organic chemistry, for the most part, whenever we want to uh, <coughs> form new compounds, there are two, process, pre two processes that take place. There's what we call bond, bond breaking and bond formation. Sometimes we refer to bond breaking as cleavage. So we do have two, with regard to bond cleavage, we have two types of bond cleavage in organic chemistry. We have what we call the heterolytic cleavage. In the heterolytic cleavage, if we take a look at this molecule here as an example, you see this arrow here. Anytime we draw an arrow in reaction mechanism, this arrow simply means two electron flow. In other words, we have the two electrons are moving from this part of the molecule to this oxygen here. So this is a case of heterolytic cleavage in which you have this bonding electron, the, the, le the two electrons that bond this carbon and this oxygen, both of those two electrons move all the way to oxygen. In other words, it is a polar, what we call a polar uh, bond, I mean polar reaction.
in which we break the, the bonding uh, electrons such that only one of the atoms involved in the bonding receives the two electrons. So we call that heterolytic cleavage. We also have what we call homolytic cleavage or homolysis. In the case of homolytic cleavage, what you have, if we use chlorine atom as an example, or chlorine molecule as an example, you see here, anytime you see us use this arrow, a fish hook arrow, a one-sided arrow, what that tells you is that you only have one electron flow. In this case, what are we doing? We have these two electrons that bond these two uh, chlorine atoms. One of them moves to the chlorine, this chlorine here. The other moves to the other chlorine. Okay, so this would be a case of symmetrical cleavage as opposed to the asymmetrical cleavage here. This would be called as asymmetric. Whereas uh, this would be symmetrical cleavage. In the symmetrical cleavage, or the homolytic cleavage, to see here, one of each one of the uh, atoms involved in the bond bonding receives one electron each, and so therefore you you end up with what we call radicals. For the most part, in this chapter, most of what we are going to be discussing in this chapter will involve heterolytic cleavage. Most of what we are, the reactions we are going to discuss will involve heterolytic cleavage, which is this here. Okay, but before we get into those, you got. Okay. Now, before we get into all of the uh, some of the reactions, let us now introduce you introduction to organic reaction language. Organic, what I would call organic reaction language. This language we are going to teach you and then we will be using these terminologies as we go along during the course of the semester. Take a look at this molecule here. Okay, that's the water molecule. The oxygen atom, of course, has two pairs of non-bonding electrons. If that water molecule comes in here, react with this hydrochloric acid. Notice here, in the hydrochloric acid, the hydrogen-chlorine bond is a polar bond, okay, with most of the electron going towards the chlorine atom. If we draw this arrow, keep in mind the arrow shows that we are moving two electrons. If we draw that arrow to grab this hydrogen here, or protons, the hydrogen chlorine bond will break heterolytically. Now we are talking organic language. Will break heterolytically, you know what that means by now. And then you form this. We form what we call the hydronium ion right here. And the chloride ion or the, or the chlorine ion called this chloride. 
In this case, we call this an acid-base reaction, a Bronsted acid-base reaction. In which the water through the oxygen atom is acting as a base. The water through the uh, oxygen atom is acting as a base, and the hydrogen chloride is acting as an acid. Because in this case, if we go by the Bronsted acid definition, a base is any species that accepts a proton, and that is what this oxygen is doing. And an acid is any species that donates a proton, and that is what the hydrogen chloride is doing. Now, supposing we also now have this. And we have this molecule here. At this point, let us simply tell you that this is a reaction intermediate. This carbon that is positively charged, it is a reaction intermediate. Supposing we have that. This, this positively charged carbon here, we generally refer to as a carbocation. Okay, so you see a positively charged carbon is called a carbocation. Now supposing this water now with the pair of electrons comes in attached this here. So at this point, we now refer to this water as a nucleophile. At this point, we do not call it a base at this point because it is going to bond itself to a carbon atom. So the difference between a base and a nucleophile depends on what it, do, what the, what it does. In this case, this oxygen is, at, is forming a bond to carbon atom. Therefore, we say it is a nucleophile, okay, as opposed to being, an, uh, being a base. Now, this carbocation here, we refer to this as an electrophile. We refer to this as an electrophile. This is very important because we are going to use this terminology all through organic chemistry. So what is a nucleophile? A nucleophile is any species that is capable of donating electron so that you form a carbon, uh, carbon uh, nucleophile bond, okay? So here we said essentially nucleophile means a nucleus lover, something that likes a positive charge. Any species that is attracted towards a positive charge we call a nucleophile. And the electrophile here, we could refer to this as electron lover, which is any species that is attracted to electron. Okay? So in this case, what do we have? We have this reaction here. In essence, we end up with a protonated aqua. Okay? But the basic reaction that we have here is that we have a nucleophile attacking this positively charged center here. 
to form this product. Okay? And that is always the case. The electron will move from the nucleophile to the electrophile, not the other direction. At no time, at no time, I, I want to warn you here, at no time do you draw this arrow to show this. No. If you do that, you will be, you are going to lose some points. So this is the basic organic chemistry terminology. Electrons always flow from the nucleophile to the electrophile. An electrophile is any species, I'm sorry, nucleophile is any species that contains non-bonding pair of electron or pi electron. Okay, let me define that. A nucleophile equals to any species That contain that contain <coughs> non-bonding. No, sorry, non-bonding electron or pi electrons or pi electrons. That is a nucleophile. On the other hand, an electrophile is any positively charged species that will attract electrons. An electrophile equals to any positively positively charge species or any species that can develop a positive charge or any species that can develop a positive charge. We refer to as an electrophile. Okay, now <coughs> let's give you some example. Got that? Okay. For example, supposing we have this. Supposing we have this. This carbon carbon double bond. Okay? And we also have this. Adrogen bromide, for example. This here, this carbon-carbon double bond could act as a nucleophile. Because it has pi electrons. Keep in mind, we told you, those pi electrons are loosely held between two atoms. So they are very reactive. And this here, This hydrogen bromide, the hydrogen and hydrogen bromide, could act as an electrophile. So what will happen here? If I ask you to draw the mechanism, of course you have to show the arrow in which you are showing the movement of electron. So this part electron comes here grab this proton here from hydrogen bromide. In so doing, hydrogen will release the bonding electron to bromine. So we have this here. This 
let me use a different color here. So it's, let's use green. Let us say this is green and this is green. Okay. Now we have this hydrogen was here before. The new hydrogen is now here. This hydrogen was here before. So what have we done here? We have added this hydrogen here or proton to this carbon-carbon double bond. Now, because we are using this pi electron flowing away to form a bond between this carbon and this hydrogen, this, uh, this carbon here now become positively charged. Become, huh? At this point, it does not matter, okay? Because you are dealing with a symmetrical model. Very good question, though. I'll, that is exactly where I want to go. So at this point, what have we formed here? We have formed a secondary carbocation. We have formed a secondary carbocation. Because if you look at this carbon here, a secondary carbon is that carbon that is attached to only two other carbon atoms. So this is, this is a secondary carbocation. Now, supposing we have this molecule. Can you repeat that one properly? Huh? Can you repeat what you just said one time? I said we have formed a secondary carbocation. Because this carbocation, this positive charge, is on the secondary <coughs> carbon. And the secondary carbon is only is that carbon that is attached to only two other carbon atoms. Okay. okay. Now, supposing we now have this. <laughs> Supposing we have this, and we have the same reagent, hydrogen bromide. <laughs> Hydrogen bromide. If this pi electron will be grabbing this proton here, see what is going to happen. Come here. And you break this hydrogen bromine bond. This is what you are going to form. I'm going to form this. This hydrogen was here before. And then the new hydrogen that is added is on this carbon. OK? At this point, that hydrogen only comes to this carbon here. It doesn't go to this carbon. Because at this point, we are forming a tertiary carbocation. We are forming a tertiary carbocation. And why is it that this hydrogen comes here, it doesn't come here? And that is because we are forming the most stable carbocation. Okay, in, in organic reactions, whenever given a chance, reaction will give you the intermediate that is more stable. In other words, the reaction will go through that intermediate that is the most stable or the most stable. So at this point, let me give you the order of stability of carbocation. So that will help you to determine what kind of what reaction are the reaction outcomes. Okay, so here we get the secondary carbocation. At this point, it doesn't matter which hydrogen it goes, uh, where the hydrogen goes, because the, uh, this is a symmetrical carbon-carbon double bond. But here, it doesn't matter. Okay? Right here. So let us give you the order of order of carbon stability. Okay. 
the most stable being here, if we have, for now, we say we have tertiary carbocation, most stable. There are some other carbocation that we are going to introduce to you that will be just as stable as tertiary carbocation cation, or even more stable. But for now, let us focus on just uh, the one I will give you right now. Tertiary carbocation, most stable, followed by secondary carbocation. Keep in mind, this R here means that we have carbon attached to this carbon here. Carbon attached to this carbon. Carbon attached to this carbon. That's the second decarbocation. And the second decarbocation is more stable than the primary carbocation. And the least stable of all the carbocations is the methyl carbocation. Okay, that is the order of stability of carbocation, and we can we can use this to determine the outcome of chemical reactions. Now, let me go back to the last slide. In this slide here, you notice what we've done here. Notice our focus is on this carbon-carbon double bond. Okay, the rest of the molecule has nothing to do with this. Okay, if you look at this carbon-carbon double bond, this carbon here has no hydrogen attached to it. On the other hand, this carbon has hydrogen attached to it. So we therefore could come out with a general rule that we call the Markovnikov Markov Nikov rule. Okay. In the Makonikov rule, what does it say? It says whenever you have a reaction in which you are adding hydrogen and some other group, let us call it HX, to a carbon-carbon double bond, the hydrogen will add to the carbon of the carbon-carbon double bond that contains more hydrogen. Okay? Yes. I will write in the, the next slide, we'll see that. Okay? Whenever you see any reaction in which you are adding hydrogen and some kind of group, other group to a carbon carbon double bond, the hydrogen atom will add to that carbon that contains more hydrogen. In this case, this carbon contains more hydrogen, so therefore the hydrogen comes here, and that is what we see here. Okay? Okay? Uh, the next slide will actually give you more of that. Let's see here. Okay. Okay, <clears throat> I'm going to come back to that definition. So what I just described to you in the sequence of reaction I just described to you is what we refer to as electrophilic addition reaction of alkenes. Electrophilic addition reactions of alkenes. In other words, we are adding electrophile to a carbon-carbon double bond, right here. Okay. Okay, what, 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 look at the mechanism here. The first step, nucleophile, he attacks the electrophile. We form a carbocation intermediate. And then, what happens to the carbocation intermediate? The bromide that you release now acts as, this bromide now acts as a nucleophile. 
to attack the electrophilic carbon, which you call a carbocation. And then you form this final product. Okay? So the net outcome of this reaction, the net outcome of this reaction is the addition of hydrogen and bromine across the carbon carbon double bond. The net outcome of this reaction is the addition of hydrogen and bromine across the carbon carbon double bond in what we call a Makonikov addition type reaction. Now you say, what is the definition of Makonikov again? Okay, this is the definition. In electrophilic addition uh, to double bonds, the electrophile, in this case, hydrogen, bonds to the carbon that has the most or more hydrogen. Okay? A general way, a more generalized way of thinking of the Makonikov uh, rule is this here. In electrophilic addition reaction, the mechanism goes to the formation of the most stable carbocation. In essence, that is why the Makonikov rules work. Because whenever you are adding the hydrogen to a carbon-carbon double bond, it goes to an intermediate carbocation. And the intermediate carbocation that will be formed will be the one that is most stable. Okay, let us give you now some examples of these reactions. Okay. Very often, we do not ask you to give the mechanism of the reaction. We simply say, give us the outcome of this reaction. If I want the mechanism, I will tell you, give me the mechanism. That is when you draw the arrow. But if 80% of the time, all we are going to ask you to do, give the outcome of this reaction. Okay, now, take a look at this molecule here. We have a carbon-carbon double bond reacting with hydrogen chloride. See what happens. The hydrogen goes here, the chlorine goes here. This is following Makonikov rule. You follow that. This hydrogen here contains two hydrogens. Okay, this one contains only one hydrogen. So hydrogen goes here, the chlorine goes here. So you can just use that rule to determine the outcome of your reaction. Okay. About this one here. I have a yes. Draw an arrow. You want the mechanism. You know that was, But you want the mechanism. Why don't you see me after class? Seriously, I'm serious, serious. But at this point, at this point, you know, we have given you the mechanism before, but see me after class. At this point, this is the point I want to make here. We've given you the Makonikov rule. We say whenever you are adding, whenever you are in an electrophilic addition reaction, in this case, you are adding hydrogen and chlorine to this carbon-carbon double bond, right? This hydrogen is here. You have two hydrogens here. And here, you only have one hydrogen. If I ask you, what is the outcome of this reaction? Where does the hydrogen go? The hydrogen goes here. And that is why now you now have a metal group here. And the chlorine goes here. Okay. Now, if you look at the next one. Um, yes. Where the where is the plus? Where that is the mechanism. You are missing the medicine mechanism with the outcome. Okay. Don't don't let us miss the mechanism mechanism with the outcome. Okay, let us go to the next one. Okay. Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, we will finish off with 
we will finish up with this on uh, <laughs> on Thursday. But the point here is, whenever you're doing electrophilic addition reactions, okay, the hydrogen goes to the carbon that contains more hydrogen, and the other group goes to the hydrogen that contains less hydrogen. So if you look at all of this here, here, hydrogen comes here, and bromine goes here. Okay? Okay, so anyway, we are going to continue with this on uh, on Tuesday. Oh, by the way, I do have your uh, your quiz number five uh, here. I'll give that back to you. Quiz number five is here. Uh, you could pick it up. <laughs> 